How's it going, boys? My name is Schlatt, and welcome back to the Weekly Slap. Now three weeks in a row, baby. This is a show called Inbox, where I take questions from you guys and answer them to the best of my ability. And today we got a question that may be useful for you. With the new high school grads moving up into the real world soon, let's talk about what you do when life stops being a breeze. Hey, Schlatt, I hope you're well. I just wanted to ask if you had some advice for a former gifted kid who's currently in university and getting below average or average grades. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I feel like I hold myself to a higher standard of being. And I'm just wondering if you had any advice for dealing with that. I've told this story before, but I was in middle school, probably sixth grade, when I got my first really bad score on a test. Got the paper bag from the teacher upside down. That's how you know. That's, that's how you know shit hit the fan. Uh, it was an English test about grammar and weird shit like participles and direct objects and indirect objects and shit. And I never had any trouble putting together sentences uh, or writing or anything like that. But for some reason, I just couldn't get a grasp on the actual literary elements, like the definitions and all that. To this day, if you ask me what the fuck an infinitive is, I think I'll just kill myself. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. And I got the test back. And I saw the score, and I almost started crying. It was that bad. Like, I had never gotten a grade even remotely close to it in my life. And I just, I felt guilty. And so, right when I got out of school, right when I got onto the bus going home, I, (laughs) the, the guilt was eating me away to the point where I called my mother while I was on the bus ride home to see her. And I, I felt the need to admit to her over the phone, like, basically through tears, that I got a 79 on the English test. (laughs) That's what it was. It was 79. And I thought that was the end of the fucking world. And she said, okay. You know, like she didn't really understand it. I mean, point being, a lot of the time, the pressure that you put on yourself really is just that. Pressure that you put on yourself that you make entirely out of your own creation i was a gifted kid you know i was in all the accelerated programs i did all the ap courses i got a five on the fucking ap physics c mechanics exam suck my dick and when you grow up being the smart kid you can't just like give that up right you're better than your classmates you always have to be you're a better person you know bigger number better person i keep saying this when that's your normal And when you are used to getting (laughs) hundreds on tests without even opening the book, the transition into college and adulthood in general is probably going to be a lot more difficult than you expect. There's a term for it. They call it gifted kid burnout. You're at the top of the pack, K through 8 or K through 12. Everything is a breeze. And then all of a sudden, you're just kind of put into a new environment where things don't just don't come as easy because it's it's a it's a different it doesn't work the way it used to you know that 79 on my sixth grade test was so alien to me that i stopped functioning like a rational human being and and i feel like i had to call my mom i was going back home to see her like it didn't make any fucking sense you know and and this kind of hit me in college I got through it pretty well. Like, I generally did okay, but I I didn't feel like I was in my prime, similar to you, you know? Your whole life, you'd never experience academic failure. Like, what what do you think sixth grade me would have done if the next test came back a 60? I don't know. I probably would have fucking killed myself right in front of the teacher. I think I might help framing this uh, (laughs) from a really niche content creator perspective that no one else will relate to. I made videos for eight years before I made a cent. And every day I'd come home and I'd work at it. And it was and still is all I think about. And I had basically nothing to show for it. And once my time came, eight years in when I started finding success, it built and it built and it built up over time. Not all at once, but gradually to the point I'm at now. I didn't blow up overnight. It wasn't my first it wasn't my first rodeo once I started to get views. I I knew what I was doing at that point. And looking back on it, I thank my lucky fucking stars that it took me that long to succeed. Because if I went viral on my first video, I'd be ruined. You know, you see it all the time. Someone gets huge overnight because of one video or dance where they're shaking their fat ass on camera. Then a year later, you see them again, desperately trying to just recapture, you know, some of that attention they once had. A lot of the time, they're doing the same thing that got them there. 
wondering why it's not hitting like it used to. You know, they and, and what that is is they didn't have the skills they needed to adapt to to learn to progress in this changing landscape. And now imagine a kid who breezed through school without ever having to study. Like you, bitch. Straight A's, piece of cake, never faced with failure, never had to struggle to achieve. It all came easy. And uh oh, college comes around, you get your first C or D, God forbid an F, and never having experienced something like that before, you start to panic. Because you've you've never developed a way to deal with the situation. There was no there was never a sleepless night of studying. There was no desperately searching for help on YouTube and finding that Salcon video with three hundred views that answered the exact fucking question you had. You, you didn't spend eight years learning how to do the job and developing the skills properly like I did with YouTube, and that's that's where that <laughs> reference comes in. I mean, gifted kid burnout is essentially you going viral. And so when the when for the first time in your life you're met with actual academic challenge, you don't know what to do. You know, that's what the burnout is. It's not it's not oh I'm so tired of doing this I can't do it anymore it's not ever <laughs> having needed the work ethic other kids needed to develop to succeed and so in a lot of cases you start to fall behind you know in a lot of ways you're worse off than your peers who you know it wasn't a breeze for them earlier and you got to get your shit together pretty quick now, that was me in my last two semesters in college. That's when it really started to get hard for me, and doubly hard as I tried to make this whole YouTube thing work. And some of those, <laughs> some of those wake-up calls I got through Blackboard grade reports and like emails from professors asking if I needed help were like real, real tough pills to swallow. But look, <laughs> as it turns out, when I called my mom in sixth grade and I told her the news, she didn't want to fucking kill me. You know, my parents, my, my professors, they didn't kick me out of the class when I fucked up on a quiz. Again, a lot of the time, that pressure to succeed is just self-imposed after years of it being all you know. A lot of the time, the people around you just want to see you try, you know, and trying really is the solution to a lot of that gifted kid burnout. It's so easy to shut down after a few missteps, but believe me, it's the worst thing you can do in this situation. Uh, I talk about all, all the time on this channel about how life is just kind of a really long game of momentum and keeping that car going up the hill. You know, you're pushing a car up the hill and any any second you let off the gas, um, you're going to start slipping and it gets harder and harder to, you know, keep going after that. Um, here's, here's something cringe I'm about to say. Uh, go see your professors if you're struggling. They, they have office hours for a reason. Do something about the shit that's holding you back and it won't go unnoticed. When I was applying for jobs, I didn't get letters of recommendation written by professors whose classes I aced without even having to try. Uh, it, 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 was, it was the professors whose offices I showed up to and whose classes I struggled in and who saw me put in the work. Because a man cannot truly know great successes without great failures. And I'm just, you know, that that is just a Theodore Roosevelt quote, but I thought it was, uh, I thought it was relevant. Please, try. You know, it's hard. It, it, it is, I get it. You've never had to do it before. It's the opposite from regular burnout, where the solution may very well be just some time off. And it sounds mean, because it is mean. But, but that's what it takes for you to not fall into that has-been gifted kid pit. Follow the, the, you know, the cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Get in the arena, dude. Carry a big stick. And stop skipping class, guys. You, you, you're paying for those. As always, boys, I want to thank you all for watching. And I'll see you again very soon.